It's time now for the Blue Ribbon event. It's the men's singles final of the 2012 Yonex Australian Badminton Open. And it's featuring none other than the top seed, the 2010 world champion from Paris. Currently number five in the world, a man desperate for victory here in Australia. China's Chen Jin, but standing in his way is the 2010 Australian Open winner. And he's back very much with a vengeance this year in Sydney. Tian Min Nguyen of Vietnam after overcoming the defending champion Sho Sasaki in the semi-final. He's showing plenty of the form and style which brought him the title two years ago and looking to get it back again. Chen Jin yesterday in the semi-final just hovering in third or fourth gear as much as possible against the Indonesian Simon Santoso before stepping it up after Tian Min Nguyen. He never really gave Sho Sasaki a look in and his form for 2012 had not been great leading into the tournament. The Australian Open the first time he's made it past the last 16 in 2012. Vietnam Open winner last year and there is his road to the final and after seeing off Sho Sasaki in the first game he simply ran over the top of him in the second but Chen Jin was always going to be the man to beat here a Swiss Open winner just two weeks ago semi-finalist in Malaysia probably disappointed at only making the round of 16 in the All England Championships. And as you can see there, just getting rid of the cobwebs and a bit of rust early in that opening game against Lin from Chinese Taipei. But since then, he has absolutely strolled through, just being pushed by Santoso in that first game of the semi final. But it's the men's final now. Just moments away. The head-to-head -head is very much in Chen Jin's favour. 3-0 the last time was at the Super Series in Switzerland back in 2010. And there is an absolute classic coming up now. The final of the men's singles at the Australian Badminton Open. It has been a little while since these two have met on the circuit. The first time was way back in the World Championships, the round of 32, back in 2006. Chen Jin winning in straight sets. It was straight sets again four years later in the Korea Super Series quarterfinal. 21-7, 21-19. And then, as we just saw, that result from the Swiss Super Series of 2010. A 21-16, 21-11 victory in the quarterfinals of that for Chen Jin. Tian Min has a point to prove. He wants his first ever victory over the former world champion. And he's hoping it comes here with a second Australian Badminton Open crown. The Sydney Olympics in 2000 left a lot of great memories amongst the badminton fraternity around the world. And they're back this week to soak up a little more of what the city has to offer right here on the waterfront at Darling Harbour in the and Exhibition and Convention Centre, which has right. been transformed into a fabulous world-class facility. Trish Gulp from New Zealand. Here's the chair umpire, Hester Hung, from head. Hong Kong, the service judge. I'm joined Vietnam. by three-time Australian singles champion, Stuart Briel, for this men's singles final. And Tien Stuart, to serve. it's going to be very hard for Tian Min to get up over Chen Jin, but can he do it? 
He can definitely do it, absolutely. A little bit of magic might be required, but he can definitely uh, he can definitely take it to Chenjin. And we'll see both players very well known for a, uh, a physically tiring style of badminton, and, and both of them are well known for having exceptional fitness on the court. So it should be an absolute blockbuster. Well, if the first point is anything to go by, Blockbuster might not quite cover it. Absolutely titanic. It may well be Chen Jin draws first blood. With Tian Min Yuan just misjudging that ball to the backcourt. It just wide. Yeah, just over hitting that one. Saw, saw the opening on the court and it was well set up with a couple of attacking shots, but uh, well, we might be here or not if these two keep playing like this. One all. And we've been playing a couple of minutes already, I think. Just wide, it was right onto that right hip of Nguyen. Difficult to dig out and then get the direction on it. Two, one. Certainly Chen Jin would have the the uh, the more power game with, with these two. We, although we did see him in yesterday in the semi-finals, very quick around the head to smash that one cross court, but uh, we also seen, saw Chen Jin diving all over the ground. So the fence is extremely strong and, and has that ability to lift that Three. speed and attack at uh, times when you're not expecting. And, He's now at a 3-1 lead. And it has been a confident beginning from Chen Jin. We saw in the semi-final so little emotion. He keeps it all inside. He never looks flustered. It's long. Wide. I think the reason we didn't see too much emotion yesterday is he does really know he needs to win this one to try and secure that Olympic spot with China having such a, a strong men's singles squad. Two players already are short of a position and he does have to be ranked in the top four in the world to, to gain that third position. And, and with a current world ranking of five and not too many tournaments to go, he certainly needs this one uh, to, to, to lift up to that fourth ranking and secure those three spots for China in the Olympics. That's right, a country can only have three players in a discipline at the Olympic Games if all three are in the top four in the world. So that's what China are gunning for. That's why Chen Jin is firing up the frequent flyers. In the start of 2012, he's heading around tournament to tournament, looking to get those points, looking to force his way in. It's a sorry old state of affairs for the 2010 world champion, isn't it? But what can we expect from here today? I mean, you don't get to be world champion without having an ultimately complete game. Touch at the net, power from the backcourt, and the brain to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, he does, he, he does possess, possess that X factor. He does have that ability just to turn on the power when he needs to. And we can play like this as well. Very steady, but very controlled, and just control men around the court.
It's long from Chen Jin. Chen Min needed that point. He had to work hard for it. Absolutely. It's very clear to see both players are backing in their fitness. Both obviously think they're extremely well-tuned athletes and, and are both are backing their ability to, to outlast each other. So it could be an epic. Strap yourselves in. Also, the touch of both players already. Some fabulous badminton played in the opening seven points alone. He's just looking for that net roll, wasn't he, to get it just to kiss the tape and drop over. Both players just playing a, a, a softer style of singles to start off with. We, we did see this from Chen Jin yesterday and then did explode into a few powerful rallies, but he's quite content just to run himself in at the moment and just just continue to push him in and around the court. He's like a marionette with his puppet, isn't he? Just moving him around at will and there... That power you were talking about. That's right. We saw Min try and unload with the big one, and Chen said, well, I think I've got a bit more than you, and we'll finish that one off. Oh, he pounced on that. 8-2. Chen Jin leads Tian Min Yuan of Vietnam in the final of the men's singles. We saw Chen Jin yesterday, even after a, an hour-plus match, over on the practice court with the coach giving some footwork, some push-ups, some, some leaping, just to make sure he's ready for this match, and he certainly started off extremely impressive. times he produced shots worthy of winning the rally and every time Chen Jin was there but he just kept on persisting and he got there in the end and that's that's the problem with Chen Jin he makes you play those three or four extra shots that uh, you need to at this level to hit a winner and well he, he almost left that one and maybe just misjudged and had a quick look at the lines judge and there when the opening prevents, presents itself he likes to pounce on it. Immediately re-establishes that six-point lead. Three. Change of shuttlecock from Chen Jin. Just taking that little bit extra time to get ready. Thinking about this next point and, and working out a plan. Obviously, a short serve coming up, probably. Looking for the lift. Just wide, well judged by Tian Min. That drift out there to that far corner. Four, nine. Also, probably leaving that time for just Tian Min Yuan just to think about the scoreboard as well. That has him down by six in the early stages of this one. Absolutely. And Min would understand that against a player at this level, it's very hard to peg back five, six, seven point deficit in a match, but he's, he's won the last two and it's back to a four point game. Very important to try and win the next couple and level it up. And he does just have Chen Jin a little bit rattled, doesn't he? He's taking control of that net. And at every opportunity, using that spin net and that cross-court net there to set the set the lift up, making it hard for Chen Jin. And Chen knows that he has to lift it all the way to the back of the court, otherwise there's a possibility that Min will jump up and smash that for a winner. Well, it was a 
was almost the perfect touch at the net from Tian Min Yuan. Over. He closed Ten, to within six. three. It's back out to four now. 10 6. He trails the top seed, Chen Jin. Play. Well, Chen Jin's asked for the court to be wiped, and the umpire said no, play. And Chen decided to ask the, um, the line judge to come out and wipe it anyway, and ended up doing it with the foot. It's in. Just got himself in a bit of a, of a tangle there, Tian Min Yuan, who does have some lovely touches. But at the first technical timeout in the opening game, it's the top seed, Chen Jin, the man desperate for victory, leading 11 points to six. Stuart Chenjini burst out of the blocks early. But we did see there just the evidence that Tian Min, he does have in his locker what's required to just push Chen Jin, maybe push him out of that comfort zone, make him really come out and have to show how we all know he can play. Yeah, absolutely. I think he needs to use this. He does possess a very strong net shot and, and to spin the shuttle at the net, causing a short lift to get give Min the opportunity to attack Chen is, is what's needed. He, he may struggle if he just persists with this slower game style, or while it does suit him against an opponent like Chen, you do need to uh, create some opportunities for yourself. Homebush out west in the Sydney suburbs, but we're right there where the city was founded near the rocks, right in the centre on the harbour. All those iconic values of Australia and the yeah, harbourside yeah. city. Play. And we're right there in the centre of town with the Australian badminton open as well. The top seed, Chen Jin, against the fourth seed, Tian Min Yuan, in the final of the men's singles. <coughs> from Chen Jin. There it is, that explosive power. He sets up the rally perfectly, wow. just with some smooth Six. badminton, and then all of a sudden explodes. Just elbow up high, technically perfect on that one. And sending it straight back where it had come from. Tian Min was looking to scramble back his court position. Needn't have bothered. Travelling wide of the mark as well there. Chen Jin, he's not afraid to throw himself about. And a great point and great workout as well from Tian Min. 
As we saw Chen yesterday lose a bit of skin off the knee. And it'll be interesting to see if he keeps diving, he may open up that battle wound. Court just getting a bit of a mop. When the players fall over, obviously, extremely hard work out there. A bit of sweat on the court, so just to wipe that up so they don't slip. And that's a five-point game again. I think the key is there are so few cheap points given away by Chen Jin. Yes, Tian Min is playing some fantastic badminton. He's hanging in there. He's matching him now point for point. But he's having to work so hard for it. Yeah, exactly right. And, and, and Chen doesn't give you any easy points at all. He makes you work. You, know, you, you want to win a rally. It's a 10, 15, 30-shot rally to try and win one point. And he, he really is playing exceptional badminton. And again... Just that power catching out Chen Min Yuan. This is a tactic often used in men's singles too. The soft block to get that short lift and then attack the body and move forward quite quick. He didn't need to move forward. Obviously, it was a winner on that one, but he was moving forward to cut that next one off should it come over. It's a tactic often used by the top players around the world. Chen Jin certainly is that. And he wants to prove it at the Olympic Games, and that means victory here in Australia. Oh, that is a fabulous shot from Tian Min Yuan. And that's exactly what we're talking about, though. To beat him, it has to be breathtakingly good. It, it does, just the, the steepness and, and where that shuttle's dropped in the court, that's well before the service line, which is the exceptionally hard shot to play from right at the back of the corner of the court. And all of that, and he still trails by six in this opening game. Again, that power was arrowing towards that far corner. 260 kilometres an hour. It didn't even look Service like he'd, he'd really even hit that one too hard. Eight. Fabulous replay. Just see the shuttlecock streaking across the screen. That's what 260 kilometres an hour looks like. Pressure is so much at every point. 16, 8. Every little mistake, you pay the price against Chen Jin. as well. Tim Minuet is just getting a little bit ragged all of a sudden. 17-8. Chen Jin leads. It's a very hard situation to be in. Chen Min played last night, played superb badminton and, and shots that uh, were, were normally winners against his opponent yesterday are coming back with interest today. And that was no slouch yesterday either in Sho Sasaki. The defending champion from 2011 and Tim Min now just needs to have a little break, get to the end of this game. Yeah, I think if he can win a few points and, and try and build some momentum ready for the next game, that, that's important. He, he can't go out and lose this one 21-8 and then expect to start well on the next one. He really does need to build even, even two or three points, just get a little bit of momentum going, trying to find a game style that's going to suit against Chen Jin and then work on the second game from there. It's 
long. Shenzhen is still just finding his range. Into that far end of the court. Nine, 18. Eighteen nine. It will hurt Qian Min Yuan if he can't get to double figures. Oh, just seeing the other side to the game. Set up with the nine. surprise drop shot. Min does very well to get that one, but then Chen Jin taking it so high at the net, Min's got to stop and, and really can just watch the shuttle hit the ground. That's missed wide. That's a rarity. Ten Min can take heart from that, but he is in fact human. As he just pokes it out well wide of the line. Misses wide. Again, the same problem, understanding that for it to be a winner or for it to set up a, an easy smash at the netty, he has to hit every single line and there's no margin for error. And that's a problem when you play Chen Jin, he just gets everything back. Game point, 10 of them for Chen Jin in the opening game of this men's singles final. taking the point to Chen Jin. He was just that change of speed when he got the opportunity right there up and big cross court. We saw many winners from yesterday. Identical shot and the leap and the power is what you need to be able to hit the floor against Chen Jin. Is at work. Chen Jin takes the opening game of the men's singles final at the Onyx Australian Badminton Open. First Comfortably enough, the top Chen seed, 21 points to 11. 11. Stuart, it is hard to see just how Tian Min can find a way back into this. He, he's such a complete player. He's such a demoralising player to play against as well, Chen Jin, because he's just everywhere. That's right. I'm sure Min is standing up the other end thinking, how can I possibly get the shuttle through this guy? It's, a, it's an unbelievably good badminton performance from Chen Jin, and I guess it shows he's why, why he's ranked so high in the world. But there is those maybe five or six top players in the world that are slightly above the rest and we're seeing it here now that he certainly belongs in that category and just there we go everywhere wins trying everything smashing driving and he's produced some fabulous shots of his own as well he has nothing just but but it just doesn't hit the floor and if it does it's, it only happens once and then, and then Chen Jin's able to answer straight away with some more power or more finesse or it's, it's, a, it's a magnificent effort so far. We see Chen there. He's, he's already out on court. He's so keen to keep this match going and the momentum. And, and Min's still taking just that little bit extra time to get ready, just testing the shuttle, making sure that this end <laughs> is how he thinks it will be based on previous time on court. And Chen doing exactly the same thing, just testing that shuttle. Well, for the moment, Chen Jin is averaging two points for every one from Tian Min Yuan. And if the Vietnamese champion wants to try and turn this one around, wants to add a second Australian Open crown to the one he earned in 2010, 
He has to turn things around very quickly now. Sydney Harbour, the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, the backdrop for this wonderful week of international badminton, the Australian Badminton Open, set in one of the great cities of the world. It's finals day in the 2012 Australian Open. In its men's final, the top seed Chen Jin of China against the fourth seed, Tian Min Yuen. Five in the world against 12 in the world. And Tian Min has decided if he's to go down, he's going to go down fighting, perhaps in a blaze of glory. Absolutely, much better point there from Chen Men. Just, just creating an opportunity there to, to, to hit into the body of Chen Jin and Chen not really ready for that next one to come back. Side. Wrist turning out, slicing it. I think this one might have been just travelling out and possibly the reason why I'm in didn't get that one back. Just a bit of undecisiveness there and, and really wasn't sure whether he hit it or, or leave it in the end. He really did neither. And just as it started in game one, some long rallies. You just get the feeling, though, that Chen Jin's just toying to a certain extent. He's, he could finish them earlier, perhaps, not to pay any disrespect to Tian Min Yuan, who's played some brilliant badminton. But Chen Jin's always in control. And there's a, just a bit of a ragged edge to Tian Min Yuan. He's fighting harder to stay in it, and occasionally he does produce a fabulous point like that. That's right, he really needs to get on a bit of a roll and, and build up some confidence and I think we'll, if he does manage to do that we'll see a lot more of these shuttles hitting the ground but at the moment he's just having trouble finding a way through but some more of that and we'll win for a, a great game. his biggest lead of the evening. 3-1 at the start of this second game. No emotion at all from Chen Jin. It doesn't matter whether he's winning or losing. We don't see any change in expression or it's very hard to work out what uh, is going on. Well, service fault, which is very uncommon in men's singles. We see it a little bit in the, in the men's doubles where there's a need for such an advantage to get that shuttle so close to the net. But Men's singles normally not that common to see a service fault, but one called there. I thought for a moment might just have angered Tian Min into action there. And it's Chen Jin that just, just so puts quick. it up another gear. And so quick to turn defence into attack there. We just see two steps and just the shuttles on the ground. And he's again, you mentioned it, Stuart, always looking for that step forward as soon as he hits it, moving back towards the net. Four, That's just taken him a little while at the start of each change of ends just to find his range doesn't it yeah, he, he does he does work himself into the game very well he, he just takes these first five or six points to to find out what's going on just check the breeze check the court conditions and then he just he 
see him just explode and win three or four or five points in a row. But Chen Min just got out to a two-point lead here. And again, we don't see much emotion from Chen Jin, but Min seems to be working himself into this game nicely in this second set. just yet for Chen Jin, but Tian Min Yuan is turning things around, or in the process of doing so anyway. He leads 6-3 in game two. And it's the price of each point, isn't it, at the moment? All of a sudden, Tian Min He's earning some cheap points. That's right, and if you can pick up another couple, well, Chen Jin nearly taking Min's head off <laughs> with that one. But uh, if you can pick up a couple and just extend that gap to four or five, it is very hard to peg back at this level. But Chen Jin always just keeping you in check and, and, and very uncommon for him to go down any more than two or three points, and he can pick those up so quickly with his power. chance of coming back over. That's uh, very powerful and extremely strong player, Chen Jin, and, and so graceful around the court. It's very hard to hit, get the shuttle to hit the ground up his end of the court. The top seed is serving at 5-6. Piece. You can see what Min is trying to do much quicker around the court now and pushing Chen all the way to the back, trying to negate that big smash and, and then also moving very full, uh, very quick to the net as well. But still, Chen has got an answer for everything at this stage. Three points whittled down to nothing. And then a huge let court in Chen Jin's favour. Oh, taking a lot of the a lot of the net too and but that power uh, still still manages to get the shuttle over the tape. Starting to 
get behind Chen Chen. Just a slight variation on that attack there. You see he's been going cross-court quite often with the smash and now he's just decided to pop one straight down the line onto Min's backhand side and take him slightly by surprise. And just a lazy 268 kilometres an hour. Now in the men's double final from Marcus Kiddo, we did hit a tournament high 289 kilometres an hour. Again, set up with the smash to the body, the push out wide and then the easy kill. But that, that smash to the body, as I've spoken about before, is that's what the, the top players use quite a lot. They do target the body that gives them a chance to move forward with little chance of hitting a big angle against them. So they do have that ability to move forward and cut that next one off. And he's just stepping on the accelerator again, isn't he? 9.70 leads now. Three of the best shots that he's that he's able to hit, and they all come back. And from three down at six three, he's taken the next eight point seven one. Chen Jin. Oh. eight one. And he now leads by four. The technical timeout. The top seed Chen Jin in his quest to make it to London 2012. He's staying on track. He leads 11-7 in the second game. And Stuart, we saw it yesterday in the semi-final. Just that way he sits in third gear. And then just so easily steps it up when he needs to. Is that disrespectful to his opponents? I don't think so. I think he... I think he just uses the opportunity to assess his opponent and then he, he's, he's now found a weakness which is that smash to the body which is used four or five times in a row and, and me 